Our uh, chapter is Chapter 3, back at the ranch farm, and the overall uh, the motif of the chapter is what looks like a relatively straightforward Ma and Pa operation um, is actually the result of a lot of complex interactions between the government, industry, the farmers themselves, and um, educational institution, in this case, Texas Tech. So that actually brings me to our first little part in summary up there, the virtuous cycle. Here you see Texas Tech providing um, technology uh, to the actual farmer himself being granted research grants by the federal government and then partnering with Monsanto and some of the other large um, ag businesses uh, in order to um, support the farmer. Texas Tech, a lot of alums go to work for Monsanto. Lobbying of campaign, campaign contributions flow from Monsanto and truly also from the farmer to the federal government. Um, and in return, the farmer gets GM seeds uh, from Monsanto. So ultimately, they're all tied together and they all create the success of the industry um, by interacting with each other in a cooperative manner. This has evolved naturally, it's been kind of an organic process and the end result of it is that the U.S. industry has an advantage from anyone else in the world built in. Another one of the uh, things we explored in the chapter is the legacy costs um, that resulted in disparate adoption of technological innovation. Uh, that's a lot of $20 words there to say. When the Old South um, came into the 20th century, they had a lot of technology that was hanging around um, from antiquated processes, whereas West Texas hadn't been developed as much, it was still kind of virgin ground, and so they were more able, more easily able to pick up new technology like the tractor and eventually GM produced um, seeds and methods uh, that uh, increased their productivity. We've got our cute little quote by Einstein in there to tie it all together. I think it's very apropos. All right, uh, final thing. The cotton industry, uh, the history of the cotton industry in America has been a history of them trying to free themselves from the labor market. Now they've done so in a lot of different ways, slavery, sharecropping, immigrant labor, and finally moving into technological innovation to do that. Each one of these attempts has moral implications, ethical implications, um, some more evident than others, but all uh, that weigh on the industry as a whole. Tying it into um, today's bit global business climate, the virtuous cycle, we have um, how that's affecting technology, specifically Apple, has um, been able to insert themselves into their own virtuous cycle essentially and create it on a uh, on a global uh, on a global scale more specifically um, going into Indiana's own virtual cycle our corn industry uh, has a lot of the same characteristics that the cotton industry in West Texas Purdue is the primary uh, agricultural school here they cooperate with big ag in order to create products for the market Indiana politicians are some of the fiercest advocates for corn subsidies at a federal level they're making sure that stays freed up. Technological progress and legacy investments in terms of uh, not being uh, invested in antiquated technology and being able to essentially skip over uh, the middle step. Africa is actually a really good example of that um, in the way that they've adopted cell phones as opposed to uh, laying landlines uh, like so much of Western Europe and the developed world is tied to. Moving over to the right side of the board. I'm not going to be condescending and um, you know, read off quotes, um, but essentially they just uh, re reinforce some of the points we've already made. And here are three questions that business leaders should be able to uh, or should ask themselves um, in relation to our three core concepts. Thanks. Thank you.